Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Liv or Olivia, whatever you want to call me, that is fine. Today I'm going to be telling you guys a story, a true crime story whilst I paint my face. Before we jump into the story, I am mentioning things for mature audiences today. I am mentioning stuff about domestic violence as well. So if that's triggering, please just switch off the video. You'll find a video on puppies or something nice, something to clear your head because this video is probably not going to be it. All better. <laughs> The story I am telling you today is about a lady. Her name was Francine Hughes Wilson. She was born August 17th, 1947. She was a little fire sign. She was a little Leo. She was born in Stockbridge, Michigan in the United States. And the story I'm gonna be telling you guys was called The Burning Bed, is called The Burning Bed. So Francine was raised by her farmer father, who was also very abusive and an alcoholic, and her mother, who was a French musician, who always told Francine, you do what is best for your husband. Francine was 16 years of age when she decided to drop out of school. It was when she dropped out of school that she was to meet her husband. His name was James Mickey Hughes but everyone called him Mickey. So we're gonna call him Mickey. Francine said when she met Mickey, she was like very attracted to him because of his sophistication. He owned a car, his own car. And like, she didn't know anyone else her age or obviously <laughs> she was 16. She didn't know anyone that owned their own car. So she was like so attracted to him. Do I do green or do I do blue for the eyes? Green or blue? Francine and Mickey, they married quite shortly after meeting. It wasn't until their honeymoon that things started going wrong. Mickey started showing his true colors and that he was quite a violent person. He had a lot of built up anger. He told her she couldn't wear certain clothes when they were away on their honeymoon. He just started becoming very controlling and very demanding. Sadly, this would be just just the beginning of a 13 year domestic violence relationship. Her and Mickey went on to having four children. Their names were Christy, Jim, Dana and Nicole. In 1971, Francine was finally fed up with the abuse and decided to file for a divorce. Unlike most divorced people, when they separate, Mickey continued to live in the family home with her and the kids. It was said that Mickey was so violent, he strangled his daughter's kitten in front of her. He would choke Francine. He destroyed all their furniture. He was just a very violent man and he also drank a lot of alcohol. Francine, I mean, she obviously didn't know anything different her whole life because she grew up with her dad being abusive and also an alcoholic and her mum just told her, you do anything for your husband. She was really just doing what she had known her whole life to do. So Francine actually never pressed charges because she feared that it would just make Mickey a lot more angrier and fire, fired up. She was like scared of what he was gonna do if she did press charges. So Mickey was in a car accident which led to Francine taking care of him. So it was the afternoon of March 9th, 1977, when Francine arrived home from her secretarial program she had been going to, which Mickey had been demanding she leave and stop studying. When she returned home that afternoon, he was already intoxicated on the couch and he was refusing to let her cook meals for her four children. He like would not let her do it. He was also on her case about quitting the secretarial program as he just really didn't want her to do it. She attempted multiple times to cook the kids meals. He wouldn't let her. Finally, when she could cook the meals, he had a fit and he threw the food all over the carpet, like absolutely everywhere. And then he forced her to clean it all up. She just cooked, he threw it everywhere and made her clean it of course, Francine did as he said. She didn't want to make him any more angry than he was. So she started cleaning up the mess he had made on the floor. As soon as she had finished cleaning it up, he soiled her, like her hair and her whole self with all the mess she'd just cleaned up. He, he just threw it back on her. All her textbooks, he then forced her to burn them from the program. Francine contacted the police to file a report of domestic dispute and the police ended up coming to the house. Of course, this did not make Mickey happy 
at all. There's like no better way to put this, but he absolutely lost his shit over this. He verbally was threatening her like crazy. Yet he was gonna make her life miserable. Several hours later, he ended up falling asleep. I also should note that when the police came, when Francine made the assault complaint, they didn't arrest Mickey because they said that they weren't there the time of the assault and they hadn't actually seen him be abusive. So they couldn't do anything about it. I think at this point, it was really feeling like Francine just had no support whatsoever. She had always been told her whole life, you just deal with it. Having the constant abuse from Mickey would have made her feel like she deserved it. Growing up with your father abusing you as well, she would have also felt like she deserved it. So her whole life, she was made to feel like I'm a bad person and I deserve this abuse. I think even getting to the point that she got to by contacting the police and filing abuse report, knowing that if that didn't work out, she is just gonna really end up getting killed. He's so violent. She risked that. And then to have the police turn around and be like, we can't do anything for you because we haven't seen him do anything to you. On that evening after Mickey Mickey fell asleep. She went and put all the four kids in the car. She waited for her oldest to return home and got them all their coats, got them in the car. She grabbed a can of gas. Francine made her way to the bedroom. As she got to the bedroom, she hesitated and then she just had a voice in her head saying, do it. So he did indeed just start pouring gas around that whole, whole bedroom. Francine claimed that if she saw Mickey lying there, she doesn't remember seeing him at all. She doesn't think she stopped. She doesn't remember seeing him lying there. She just she just did it. Fumes of the gas caught, she ran for her life. So she got in the car with the kids and she turned herself into the police immediately. Her attorney sought to win an equital, acquittal, definitely saying this wrong, on a self-defense theory, but seen through the eyes of a woman instead of a man. It was a jury of 10 women and two men and they came in to court on the 3rd of November, 1977. So Francine was found not guilty by reason of temporary insanity. So both the prosecution and the defense agreed that Francine's plight was very sympathetic. And at the end of Francine's trial, she was asked if she felt like she was a liberated woman in which Francine responded, I don't think I've ever been liberated, but I'd like to be. So after Mickey's death, Francine went on to marry a guy, a country musician actually, and his name was Robert Wilson. And Francine went on to working as a licensed practical nurse. I believe she was in and out of working in nursing homes. She claims that she doesn't see herself as a hero to women as a lot of feminists see her. She actually told the Post in 1980, she doesn't know what women expect from her. She was just a housewife then and she's just a housewife now. So guys, that is the end of the story about the burning bed. I hope you guys enjoy seeing me create this makeup look. I don't know if you could tell, but I went for the green and the blue because I couldn't choose and they looked really cute together. So don't forget to subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up, stay safe, have a great week and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.